Moving on to the AFC South. The Houston Texans. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Not a lot of people like Bill O'Brien. I'm, I'm starting to learn. And I can see why. I can see why. That's okay. Trading away DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, you don't have a first-round pick. You know, you, you gave that up because you acquired Larry Tunsil, Kenny Stills. Cool. That's all good. So you get Brandon Cooks. You get David Johnson. Okay, let's look at the position that you're in now. In, in the NFL draft, you have the second-round pick, uh, number 40, that you got from Arizona from that DeAndre Hopkins trade. You select Ross Blacklock, which is not a bad selection at all. Not a bad selection. So you help your defensive tackle position. And then you get a linebacker, Jonathan Greenard, uh, in round three. Then you can get Charlie Heck. Heck of a name. Uh, fourth round, John Reed. They have just they just have a knack for getting corners and or defensive backs with the last name Reed. And then uh, Isaiah Coulter at wide receiver, which he could be the next DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know. But, man... Just looking at this draft, I think that I think going into it and coming out of it, I don't think much was gonna take away the 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 bitter taste in a lot of Texans fans and a lot of NFL fans as well as like why would you trade away one of the best wide receivers in the NFL? You know, we don't know what Bill Bryan has planned. Maybe he ends up going sixteen and zero with the offense that he has. I don't know. I, I like Blacklock, and I'm not bashing on any of the players, but, man, I don't think your team has improved that much as it was when you did have DeAndre Hopkins, uh, which that is the unfortunate truth. Moving on to the Colts. I freaking love Michael Pittman and Jonathan Taylor in the first two rounds. So you gave up your first-round pick, and then you select who Frank Reich has said arguably is the best wide receiver in the draft class in Michael Pittman. Those are some bold words, and that's a lot of expectations for Michael Pittman, but he was getting a lot of comparisons uh, as far as his size goes and his playing style to someone like Vincent Jackson, if you remember him, uh, played for the Chargers and the Buccaneers. So Pittman was a guy that they were honed in on for the longest time, and the fact that he was still available, wide receiver from USC, they pulled the trigger on him, and they got him. Not only that, but they traded up from that number 44 pick, which Cleveland got to uh, a drafted Grant Delpit with. They traded up with the Browns to number 41, went up a couple spots because they saw that Jonathan Taylor was still on the board, and they drafted a running back from Wisconsin. So this guy had uh, two years with over 2,000 yards rushing, which in college football is ridiculous to do. And then the interesting man, the interesting pick, Jacob Eason at quarterback uh, from Washington, formerly at Georgia, at one point the number one uh, touted high school quarterback in the nation. Good pick. I love it. You got Phillip Rivers, but that's only for a one-year, $25 million contract. After that, you don't know what's going to happen with Rivers. You've got Jacoby Brissett, which a lot of question marks around him. Good player, but... Is he going to stick around in Indy? So Jacob Eason is the good pick. You've got nothing to lose. If he falls that far, might as well just go ahead and take him. So uh, overall, I'm going to say that this was a very good draft by the Colts. Uh, Chris Ballard and Frank Reich did an excellent job in selecting uh, their players. The Jaguars, another team, at least in the first two rounds, did a phenomenal job in selecting their players. Uh, C.J. Henderson who moved up in draft boards. I thought he was going to fall to number 16 to the Atlanta Falcons. But he ends up being taken by the Jacksonville Jaguars at number 9 overall. They need some defensive back help after trading away Jalen Ramsey for that first-round pick, which, with that first-round pick, they selected Kayla Von Chason, a linebacker, who, since 8th grade, ninth grade, just pretty young, was already getting... Division one scholarship offers. So that's crazy to think. Uh, you lose uh, someone like Calais Campbell to the Baltimore Ravens and Yannick Nagakwe, just the way that he's calling out the president of AEW. Oh my gosh, was that a promo that we saw on Twitter? If so, Tony Khan, sign him right away. He can cut a pretty good uh, promo and get some heat. He's going to make a good heel in AEW. But Caleb Von Chason, 
a linebacker is going to be a good replacement. You need some depth at that defense with all those question marks surrounding those players. LaVisca Chenault in the second round with a 42nd pick, I thought was pretty good. I had him going to the Green Bay Packers at number 30 uh, if they stayed put and then not trade up. And then just for fun, let's just mention him. Ben Barch, you heard about him. Probably. If you haven't, Google him. Google Ben Barch. Google the uh, shake that he used. They used to drink. It's ridiculous. It's disgusting. But I love it. I love it. I'm going to have to try it one day. The Tennessee Titans went to the AFC Championship last year and they made the wild card. They were an underdog and they kept winning games. But because of that, they had some holes on their team that they needed to fill with them being a wild card team. And the fact that they went to the AFC Championship means you get a later pick. So given that the position that they're in with the number 29 overall pick, they did the best that they could with the pick that they had. Isaiah Wilson, an offensive lineman uh, from Georgia. He was obviously overshadowed by Andrew Thomas, but Wilson is a very good player, and uh, Tennessee needed to address that need after losing Jack Conklin in free agency. Then Christian Fulton, we talked about him. Falling draft boards, almost fell out of the second round. And some, some people touted him to be a first-round pick. So good job by Tennessee on that. And then Darrington Evans, a running back. And with you losing Deion Lewis, a pass-catching running back, Mel Kuyper has stated that Evans is a very good, probably the best uh, pass-catching or pass-blocking running back in this draft, which is right up Tennessee's alley if they want to find a replacement for Deion Lewis. And then they get a defensive tackle in Murchison, Cole McDonald, a quarterback, uh, hopefully to back up Ryan Tannehill, and then Chris Jackson at defensive back. So I think in the position that they were in, this was a, a good draft by the Tennessee Titans. 